Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week, where every week I pick you out a delightful GCSE Maths question that's been causing people trouble on my Diagnostic Questions website. This week, we've got a beauty from AQA. Now, those of you who've been following this series for the last probably over 30 videos now may know that I've, I've made the point that ratio and proportion is going to be far more prominent in the new GCSE than it is in the current one. That's because it's got its very own sub topic now, ratio and proportion. So it's really important that you get good at these styles of questions. And this one in particular is causing students a lot of trouble. And I think that's because it combines proportion with a bit of algebra, which is never a nice combination. So let's take a look at it. Four pizzas, I love a pizza, cost X pounds. Oh, let me get my highlighter on. I got the wrong color there. Four pizzas cost X pounds. How much does Y pizzas cost in pounds? And you get a load of algebraic expressions. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you to try to take this question on straight away with algebra, it's quite difficult. Whereas if you think of uh, actual numbers instead, it's actually not too bad. So let's pretend that X, so the cost of four pizzas is a tenner. Now that would be a bargain. That'd be like if you got some kind of voucher or something. So let's pretend that four pizzas, so four pizzas are gonna cost you a tenner. Now that's all that question is saying, four pizzas cost X pounds, we're just pretending X is a tenner. If I said to you, what's one pizza cost there? Do you reckon you could tell me? I reckon you'd probably do 10 divided by four, which should give you, if my maths is right, two pound 50. Bargain for a pizza, they'll be going to that shop. So all we said there at the start was let's pretend X is 10 pounds. So if we look where we had our 10 pounds in our calculation, there it was there. If we just remember to replace that with an X, then we can see that in fact, one pizza isn't gonna cost two pound 50, it's gonna cost X divided by four. It's gonna cost the total um, amount of cost for the four pizzas divided by the four pizzas. So one pizza is gonna cost X divided by four. Okay, hopefully you're all right with that one. And now the question says, how much does Y pizzas cost in pounds? Well, let's do something similar. Let's imagine we wanted to know the price of six pizzas. Okay, what will we do then? Well, if we knew that one pizza was uh, £2.50 and we wanted to know what six pizzas were, I reckon we just do six times £2.50 and we get our answer, which if my maths is right, is maybe 15 quid, something like that. Well, let's again, let's try and do what we did before. Let's just replace our um, things that we've said. So we've said that y is equal to six. So where does six come in our calculation? There it goes there. Two pound 50, now if you remember, two pound 50, we managed to change that into x divided by four. So instead of doing six multiplied by two pound 50, I'm gonna do y, which is my total amount of pizzas, times by my cost of one pizza, which is x divided by four. And then the only thing left to do is just make sure you're happy how to write that. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. One of it, which is to think, all right, if I'm multiplying a fraction together, sometimes I like to write it as a fraction times a fraction. That's how I do it when I'm dealing with numbers, so I might as well do it with letters. So I end up with y times x, I'll put that in alphabetical order, that's x, y divided by one times four, which is four. That works. Or some people will just say, if you've got y lots of x over four, then that's just the same as y times x over four, which we write as this. Either way you do it, hopefully you're happy that that's the final answer. Have a check, is that one of them? Yay, there it is there. So that is gonna be option C. But before you think, oh, I'm gonna knock off early, just wait a minute. Where do each of these wrong answers come from? And can we think of a better wrong answer or an alternate wrong answer? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I reckon each of these wrong answers come from not doing this particular process, not following this process through. We can see, um, if we see this one, uh, y over x with a four on the top, I don't think at any point there the students worked out what one pizza cost. At no point there have they got x divided by four, otherwise they'd have a four on the bottom and not an x on the bottom. Likewise with this one, if you've got a y on the bottom, at no point have you used this technique of working out what one pizza costs, okay? D's a little bit closer, I can see there, okay, maybe they've, they've divided by four, but look what they've done here. I think they've done y divided by four there instead of x divided by four, okay? So my kind of golden rule for dealing with things like this, if you ever get algebra, think of numbers first. Use numbers, because if you can work it out with numbers, 
All you then need to do later on is just change the numbers back into letters exactly like we've done here and you'll be laughing. And the other thing I was going to say about this is I often like to think of a, an alternate wrong answer if possible. Imagine you've done all this work and you got down to this stage. So you got down to y times by x over 4 and you're thinking, oh, give me the marks. Things are looking good here. I'll tell you what I've seen students do. Really mess it up from here. Say x times y is xy, 4 times y is 4y and leave the answer like that. No, 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 no. You've got to remember if you're times in fractions by whole numbers, write them as something over 1. It's just going to help you a lot. So there's a tricky old question. Look, as I say, you've got to get your head around ratio and proportion and be ready for twists like this. Hop yourself onto mrbartmaths.com, follow the link um, on the bottom of the worksheet or wherever you're watching this um, on YouTube or whatever, and you'll be able to try worksheets, videos, all that kind of stuff, and try the rest of this quiz out on diagnostic questions. It's a great quiz and it will really test your knowledge. And I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.